So let's now have a think about input and output pairs. So if I input seven into the keypad of this vending machine, then I would expect to get this orange can of cola. So I can say if my input is seven, then the corresponding output is the orange can. And I can write that using function notation as f of seven equals orange can. So you can see that in these brackets here, I write my input. So when my input is seven, my output is the orange can. I have a second example that says if my input is 16, then my output is the red apple. And I write that as f of 16 equals red apple. So just remember that we always have the input inside the brackets of the function notation. Here we have to work backwards. We're being asked to find the value of x for which f of x is equal to the green cupcake. So we're really being asked, what is our input value that will give us an output, which is the green cupcake? Because remember, what we have inside the bracket of our function notation is the input. So we have x here representing an unknown input. So it's asking, what would x have to be for us to get a green cupcake out of the vending machine? In other words, what number do I have to type into the keypad to get the green cupcake? Of course, that is just going to be two. So the answer to this question is that x equals two. So we've seen that a function is just like a rule or process that relates inputs to outputs. But a function is a specific type of rule. And the definition of a function tells us that a function will map an input to a unique output. Remember that unique just means one of a kind. So that means that if we put a particular input into a function, there is only one possible output that we can get. It's not like a lucky dip. We can't put an input into a function and not know what we're going to get out. So let's go back to our vending machines. The vending machine I have on the left is a function. You can see that any number that I type into the keypad only corresponds with one output. So I'd know exactly what I'm getting out of that vending machine. However, the vending machine on the right is not a function. If you notice here, I have the same numbers appearing twice in some cases. So there's a one here and a one here, for example, and there's an eight here and an eight here. So what does that mean? It means that if I went to this vending machine and decided I wanted the blue cupcake and went and typed one into the keypad, I could end up getting the blue apple, which is not what I wanted. So there's two possible outputs there associated with the input of one, and that's not allowed in a function. Although we can only have a unique output associated with every input, it's okay if we have more than one input which produces the same output. So notice here on this vending machine on the left, if I typed in nine, 10 or 11, into my keypad, I would get the same output of the green lollipop. But that's okay, that's still a function because I know exactly what I'm getting out of this function. There's only one output associated with each of those inputs. I can only get a green lollipop if I type in nine, I can only get a green lollipop if I type in 10, and I can only get a green lollipop if I type in 11. So it's still a function. Similarly, the vending machine on the right is also a function, although it looks a little bit strange because we only have one possible output, no matter what number we input, but that's okay too, because we're still very certain as to what our output is going to be. 
And you can see here that we should really restrict our domain, our set of input values to just the even numbers. Because otherwise, we aren't going to get an output at all.